What's up on my Power Addicts crew? Today on Tool Time Tuesday, we're going to do something just a little bit different. In the past videos, I've done tools that you could purchase at the store, you could rent a loaner tool program, but today I'm going to show you how to make a tool. Now if you remember one of the videos I released before, the little uh, clean out taps, they simply cleans the junk out of the threads and all that fun stuff. Now just imagine, okay, you bought you a set. If you bought a set through my Amazon links, I really appreciate that because that really helps. But just in case you bought that set and you run across a weird size bolt that you do not have in the clean out set, what do you do? What do you do? Da -da, just take another bolt. A regular bolt. Okay, now you are thinking, uh, Chuck, that doesn't have the flutes and stuff in it. Just wait. I'll show you what's up. But before we get this started, have you subscribed to my channel? If you have, I really appreciate it. But if you haven't, be sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Because I do Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, fabrication videos, cool tool videos. Come on, hit that subscribe button. You never know, you might actually learn something. All right, enough with Gavin. Let's get on with this. Boss, boss, the plane, the plane. Now lock your bolt down in a vise, because it's going to make life a lot easier on you whenever you go to cut your flutes and the threads. You don't have to hold it with your hand and trying to take the, uh, your Dremel tool, or in my case, I'm going to use my air air tools here to cut the flutes in the threads. So lock it down in the vise, or take it in vise grips and lock it down on another piece of metal, or whatever it is you've got to do. But make sure safety comes first. Now, I've got my safety glasses on. Put on the gloves. Cause look at here look real close see that right there yeah i was an idiot i wasn't wearing gloves one time i was cutting a piece of metal and even dumber i was holding the metal in my hand but i was using one of the, the big electric uh death wheel grinders instead of one of the smallest of the air ones the cutter head here on the big grinder exploded and when it did the sharp edge the broken edge of the cutter head grabbed the metal and pulled it through my hand i was cut a good past quarter inch deep right through there. People wear gloves, seriously. That right there learned my lesson from being hard headed. So put on the gloves, as you'll see here. Safety glasses. And here we go. What I'm going to do is just cut a slot right down through there, just like the tool you've seen before on my past video. Now you can see there I've got that slot cut through there. It does not have to be deep. Now I've got one there. I'm going to turn the bolt over. That's probably, whew, yep, it's hot. I turn the bolt over at about 90 degrees. And take this. Actually, what I did when I put it in the vise, but I can't do it now because it everything's hot. Take this. I'm taking the bolt and pressing it against that nut to hold it in place. Now I take my vise and tighten it back up. Now those of you who have ever tried to put a bolt in a vise will realize why I'm doing that. Because if you do it and not put something here on the shank of the bolt or the this side of the bolt right here to hold it, putting a bolt in a vise without something to hold it will make it want to rock back and forth. And it's a total pain in the tail, people, I'm telling you. So put a nut like that on the side that's going to force it here and you got the flats back here which locks it from rocking like this but also keeps the rotation in check so now cut me another slot put my glasses on and cut a slot
let's go try our tool. Let's go try her out. Now we're going to clean this with threads right here where the fender's bolted onto Project Rust Bucket. I've got these brackets right here already cut out. I'm going to start fabricating my fenders here before too long, doing the custom tubing and such. But these holes right here have got a little bit of junk in them. So let's see how well this thing works out. Let's see right there, it's more, uh, not one to turn. So, back it back out. Let me zoom in for you a little bit. So take a little WD-40 here, and that's nothing more, it provides some lubricant, I guess you might say, but it's mostly for clean out for the threads. Stay can. Screw it in there a little bit. See how well it backs out on its own. Now as you can see on the bolt right here that it's got a little bit of brown junk in it, not too bad. But it's mostly just rust up inside this thing. Obviously, it got its name by Project Rust Bucket. But these flutes that you cut into the bolt right there, they, the edges of the threads kind of act as a scraper or such as it goes through the threads and cleans out all that junk and makes your bolts when you put them in go in much easier so let's try the one above here see if I get any more junk out of that take me a rag wipe off my threads so I can see if I get any new junk see it's already hard to turn let me zoom in on that for you a little bit Back her out of there, see what kind of junk we get out of those threads. Ooh, look at that. Let me zoom back a little bit. See the solid stuff right there on the end? We got stuff down inside that groove right there that it cut out. Good way to clean those threads out. Why would I want to make this tool when I can buy them? Simple. There are going to be times, like, say if you guys purchase a set and you've got a small set that only has five in it, you're going to run across a situation if you work on a lot of different vehicles or different engines or whatever the case may be, is that you're going to run across a time to where you do not have the correct size. Then you're going to be like, I'm stuck. If you truly want to clean your threads out, you're stuck. So, this gives you choices. Get you a boat cut you some flutes in there and I use this 5 16s here even though I've actually got one that I purchased a long time ago I use this 5 16s on rust bucket here just to give you guys a cool video now for instance uh, building engines I'm really big about chasing every single bolt hole in an engine I'm, valve covers oil pan head bolts everything every single thread inside of an engine I clean them and I've got a very good reason why now let's wind the clock back a little bit and I'll tell you why chasing threads inside of the engine block saved my tail one time. I was about 17-ish, 16, 17 years old, something like that. I had a 440 charger. Yes, 16 years old, driving a big block Dodge. Yeah, okay, maybe not the smartest thing in the world for a kid to be driving something with that much power. But hey, I paid for it out of my own money. I built it. It's my baby. So the car was originally a 400 car and after blowing up two 400 CID motors, I ended up you know, getting a 440 from a buddy of mine. They pulled it out across from New Yorker, built that engine, dropped it in, good to go. Now I got a big monster 440. Sweet. So, on with the thread story is that I had to put a head gasket on it one time. Of course, you know, you pull the head bolts off, uh, clean all the gasket surface, put a new head, uh, head gasket on, put the head back on, blah, 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 blah. Well, because I was so militant, even then at that age when I built engines, I was so picky about cleaning everything that me chasing those threads, 
allowed me to get the head bolt back out of the block after the head bolt broke. Yes, head bolt broke. We was torquing down, okay, those of you who know how to build engines, you, whenever you torque down the heads on any engine, you got to tor uh, torque them a certain sequence. You do your centers, then you crisscross, bring them out. No, you kind of like to do a squeegee. You go from the center and work your way out when you're bolting down head, uh, torque head bolts. Well, you go in steps. You know, you start out at 20, 60, whatever, till you get to your torque pegs. We are our last torque sequence on the last head bolt. Also, torque wrench just felt really loose. And Dad and I just kind of looked at each other like, oh, crap, surely. Who's ever heard of twisting the head bolt in two? Really? Sure enough, twisted the head bolt in two. That threads were so clean in that block that we was able to take the head bolt that snapped off was like, I don't know, it was just down inside the block just by a little bit. I mean, it's just like, if this were a head bolt, obviously it's not. It was broken about like that right there. But because of the way it broke, it had that twisted motion on it to where it took a wide flat blade screwdriver and stuck it down inside the head and slowly worked that screwdriver and backed that bolt up to the point we could grab it from down inside the head and screwed it right out. Luckily, I had more head bolts, so yeah. Clean those threads no matter what. You will save yourself some headache by a huge margin. Uh, so I've got a 4.0 on the stand right now that's going to go in the 91 and you can, you can guarantee you I'm going to chase every, every single bolt hole in that thing. I'll replace the head bolts in it because I'm going to take the head bolts, slice them just like I did that because obviously I don't have a clean out tap that will fit the head bolts for the 4.0. So I'm going to take an old head bolt, cut those slots into it, run it all the way down through there, run it back up, spray it, WD-40, clean out the threads, run it again, do it about four or five times until that uh, comes out clean. Obviously some of you will understand why I chase the threads inside engine blocks because they have to be so clean on the inside. But some of you may be thinking that's a little bit of detailed nuts to be chasing threads in this old beast. Well again, it's one of those cases to where if I ever have to disassemble it and I got nice clean threads and I put a little bit of anesthesia in there when I tighten everything up, if I ever have to disassemble it, life's going to be much easier because I'm not going to have bolts of crap rusted together. Think about it. You're doing a little bit of prep work up front to save yourself a lot of headache on the back end. Think about it. Okay, cool. So everyone, if you like this video, hit me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, leave some cool comments down below. Those cool comments, take and, uh, tell me some tools you'd like to see me make. Um, tools that, just give me some ideas what you'd like to see. Cool. I've got access to a ton of different things, so just let me know. Everyone, appreciate it. Peace out. Later, y'all. <laughs> so some of you may think it's totally crazy to chase every nut, bolt, and whatever. Now the sirens got the dogs wailing. You know, trying to run a YouTube channel whenever you live in the middle of a city and middle of a subdivision, it's kind of mm, sometimes. Now some people may think it's a little bit detail fanatical to, if that's even a word, that acts as a way of cleaning out the threads as you're screwing it in. So. I have no idea where I was going with that.